is May 8th, and welcome to another edition of Patch. Patch. <laughs> I'm here with Dr. Patrick Brophy. How are you doing? Wow, what a great question. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> actually, uh, I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking. Um, it has clearly been a crazy time, uh, not just here locally in our community, but across the country. Um, We've had to rapidly shut down our enterprise and taking care of kids and families. We've focused on really trying to keep things going with the needed services that we have across the community, especially for our, our at-risk kiddos. And we've done, I think, pretty well in that uh, from a community standard, certainly better than some areas of the country. Um, but, you know, um, like all things, it's a lot of work. And I have just a fantastic leadership team that has really stepped up and stepped in and, and everybody's been doing a fantastic job. So I'm very lucky and the community support and outpouring has also been uh, very humbling again. You know, we're almost, you know, two months into this now, um, you know, maybe a good opportunity to say, you know, kind of, you know, where do we stand, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, rules and regulations still in place, but maybe people are beginning to hear about a lifting of some of those things. Um, and that's where we're at, right? Be beginning a reopening plan. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's very important. Um, uh, when this whole thing started, we shut down any elective surgeries or what were considered elective at the time because we didn't really understand how long this was gonna take uh, in terms of our ad adaptation to our new way of doing things. And what's, uh, what's become apparent is that this is going to be uh, really uh, a focus for us to change how we deliver healthcare moving forward. And now we're at the point where in our community, uh, we can start to reopen and offer those um, semi-urgent cases be done. And actually we will be moving towards opening up elective procedures. And in pediatrics, to be honest with you, um, there's really no, I like to call them essential procedures, and there's really no uh, non-essential procedures in pediatrics. Uh, it's a little different than our adult colleagues. So uh, we really want to actually focus on uh, opening up with a thought out plan that utilizes the regulations that are provided by the community, by the county, by the state, by the federal government, and our focus is and how always will be on keeping our patients safe when they come to the hospital. And to be uh, you know, quite frank with you, I think right now the hospital is the safest place to be because we have been at it cleaning. Uh, we have rigor in terms of how we monitor ourselves. We actually have people that will walk around and check and make sure that we're all observing social distancing when we can we will be wearing our masks and so it does change how we operationalize things but you know uh what comes from this is something i think very interesting i think it allows us to actually refocus on really delivering great care that's patient and family focused in a very safe way and uh, our plans have come together we've been able to utilize uh, virtual visits that's like telehealth uh, mm -hmm. and we will continue to do that and what that has allowed us to do is offer both a virtual platform to care for our families but there are some that really need to be seen physically and so we're able to open up more space to allow more visits to occur um, in a socially distanced uh, way and actually it's physically distanced because none of us are really socially <laughs> Right, I know the staff misses so many of their families, so many of their patients. Because, right, you know, we said this message at first, you know, stay home. The community has done an amazing job at that. Um, and now there's this message of, you know, stay home but stay connected. But also, you're right, you know, some things, especially with kids, can't necessarily wait. And some things have to be done in person. Um, so, you know, our, our, our building, still we haven't moved or anything like that, but a lot of contents inside, the experience is different when people come back, right? Um, yes. We really want people to enter um, through through strong hospitals, so whether that's the, the main lobby or from the parking garage right there on Elmwood Avenue, we want people to um, stop there because um, we need to ask them a few questions, right? Ask them a few questions about, you know, 
potentially COVID systems and make sure, right, that they have masks. Absolutely. Yep. And I, I think, you know, one of the things that we've really worked on is because we're wearing masks, because we're wearing shields, sometimes it can be kind of scary to people, but we actually have uh, tags that show our pictures. So you can see what we look like without our masks on and without uh, face shields on. And just to be clear, this is for your protection just as much as it is ours. And our focus, again, will always be on making your visit safe. And we want to provide the great care we've always provided, but we'll do it in a little different way. So mm -hmm. I know um, you've been there. I've been there. You know, in the waiting rooms, we're working really hard not to have people wait in those waiting rooms. But if they do need to be there, all the chairs have been moved at least six feet apart. Um, everything is being wiped down, you know, left and right. I hate to say it, but a lot of the toys have been, actually all the toys have been removed just so there's not any sharing of those. Um, trying to minimize any of the paperwork that you might need to sign. And if you do need to use those things, those are wiped down in between. Um, so many steps that people are taking to uh, really make these visits um, efficient. And um, what's cool is, um, you know, we call it our, our children's hospital family, at least that's what I call it. And we've been in touch with a lot of the families who've been here over the past few weeks and have said, yes, I've noticed obviously the changes, but I feel secure in them. You know, everything I hear about all the rules we're supposed to follow, I'm seeing those at the children's hospital. And maybe they had some anxiety coming in, which, you know, under the best of circumstances, sure. maybe is kind of normal. Um, but but they're really feeling relieved by seeing that the things that we put in place. And um, Sandy is there leading the way, literally pointing you down different directions to go. So a familiar face is definitely waiting for you. And there she is behind you as well. So those familiar faces, as you said, behind these masks, um, if you do need to come to the hospital, bring one. If for some reason you don't have one, a screener at the front door will give one to you. Um, but we're working on it, right? We're going to get things back open and get people back in. We are for sure. And you know, there is a ton of resources available for people on our website to access uh, for any questions they have, frequently asked questions. We have our ability to utilize my chart to actually pre-register, go through screening questions, things along that line. So we're really trying to make it as convenient as we possibly can. And I kind of like to think of this uh, in reverse, you know, um, the patient will see you now. <laughs> instead of the doctor will see you now. So it's really a different, a different focus. But you know, we are, or you are, we all have the same concerns. We want to take care of you. We want to make sure we're safe. And we're part of the community, so we're here to answer questions. But please, uh, don't be afraid to come into the hospital. Uh, we're doing we're doing a really great job of making sure we're keeping people safe. I think that's a perfect way to end it. Thanks so much for your time, Dr. Brophy. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer. Have a great uh, Mother's Day. I know it's coming up. <laughs> Thanks so much. Bye.